It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. It's official. 2016 was the hottest year on record, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's 27th Annual State of the Climate Report. More than 450 scientists from over 60 countries contributed to the NOAA report that details several other record-breaking events in 2016. All this under the Trump administration who is still in denial over the existence of human-caused climate change. Joining us now to discuss the NOAA report in our current political climate is Dr. Dojo Rom, who is a physicist, climate expert, author, and the founder of Think Progress, which is an uh, organization, and it has a blog called Climate Progress, which he writes, and Time magazine called him the web's most influential climate change blogger. He is also an author of many books, including Climate Change, What Everyone Needs to Know. His latest article published in Climate Progress is titled, 450 Scientists Present a Stunning Rebuke of Trump's Climate Science Denial which is a second report, which we are going to talk about as well. So I thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Rom. Well, thanks for having me. So Dr. Rom, uh, first let's discuss uh, some of the key findings from the NOAA report that concerns you the most. Well, this report uh, says, you know, that 2016 was the hottest year on record and uh, it it beat out 2015, which had been the hottest, and 2015 had beat out 2014. And it is quite clear that uh, in the report that uh, not only are temperatures at a record level, but so are greenhouse gas emissions. And the report is fairly blunt that, you know, the record greenhouse gas emissions equals record warming. And, you know, this is directly at odds with what this, uh, the Trump administration uh, has been saying that, you know, humans uh, aren't causing global warming or we're not a major cause of global warming and there's nothing to worry about. Dr. Rom, is there evidence in the new report that the rate of warming is accelerating? Well, greenhouse gases, uh, let's, you know, focus on carbon dioxide, which is the main uh, greenhouse gas and it's, it, comes from burning coal oil and natural gas and, and deforestation. Uh, it is at record levels. It has passed uh, 400 parts per million. And that is a level that has not been seen in millions of years. And the last time that it was at this level, uh, you know, we had much higher levels of warming. There, there are delays in the system. That's the thing to realize. We haven't fully felt all of the warming that we're going to just from the current levels of emissions. And we keep adding, you know, uh, you know, 30 plus billion tons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere every year. So we are just adding more and more heat trapping gases and we are going to be setting more and more and more temperature records. The science predicts that CO2 levels will rise faster and faster uh, unless we really cut CO2 uh, emissions uh, sharply. And people should understand the distinction between CO2 emissions and CO2 levels. It's kind of like in a bathtub, the CO2 emissions are like the water coming out of the faucet, and the CO2 levels are like the level in the bathtub. Um, and so even if CO2 emissions don't rise, there's still water coming out of the faucet and, and the water level in the bathtub is going to keep rising. So the fact is the only way that you can stop the, temp the CO2 levels from warming and stop temperatures from warming is if the amount of water going into the bathtub is, is equal to the amount of water leaving it through various sinks. In the case of a bathtub, it's the drain. In the case of the climate system, the water, the CO2 uh, gets soaked up in the oceans and by some plant matter. Um, so you really have to have, you know, deep cuts in global CO2 emissions before you're going to see CO2 levels stop rising. 
And uh, apparently the report also points to the average sea surface temperatures, which was also apparently the highest on record. Tell us more about that. Well, you know, people should know that uh, over 90% of all of the heat that gets trapped uh, by greenhouse gases ends up in the ocean. So that's where we're seeing uh, uh, a huge amount of accumulation of heat. Um, that's one of the reasons why, of course, we're also seeing uh, uh, some of, you know, Antarctica uh, melting because our Antarctica, which contains 90% of the landlocked ice in the world, is melting from underneath, uh, which is to say it's melting from the water, from the ocean, eating away at it. And so, yeah, people should be very concerned. So, Dr. Rom, the surface uh, sea level temperatures are rising. What impact does this have on the actual sea? Well, as the surface temperatures rise, uh, that also spreads deep down. So the entire ocean warms. Um, and one of the big impacts of the ocean warming is more water vapor uh, in the atmosphere, because the warmer uh, the ocean is, the more you're going to see evaporation. So that means you're going to see more intense rainstorms. So we have been seeing more intense rainstorms. The other thing that happens as you warm the oceans is uh, tropical storms get their energy from the ocean. The warmer the ocean is, the more intense the tropical storms are. And that's why we are seeing uh, around the world more intense the, the most intense tropical storms are becoming stronger and they're spinning up faster. So those are a couple of the effects that we're seeing. All right. Now, um, the report also pointed to sea level rises, and that is also the highest on record. Uh, there seems to be a varying debate, though, among scientists about how fast the sea levels will rise in the next decade. But um, are we uh, already seeing the effects of it in the U.S.? I mean, when you look at the summer storms and the land masses slowly disappearing um, in, in coastal areas, is. Are these the kinds of things, or uh, times to come? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been, uh, uh, sea levels have risen several inches in the past few decades. And um, remember the, that every storm surge we get, a Superstorm Sandy or, or any, is on top of the sea level rise. So um, already Superstorm Sandy had, was, was more destructive because there had been over eight inches of sea level rise in the past century. Uh, and that was added on top of the Superstorm Sandy, Sandy uh, storm surge. Um, so as sea levels rise, you're gonna see obviously more coastal flooding. You're gonna see more coastal flooding even on clear weather. This is a so-called king tide that we're gonna be coming to in September and October, you know, in places like Miami, which can flood even on a perfectly clear day, simply because sea levels are rising and the water creeps through uh, uh, underneath uh, the ground because the ground is porous limestone uh, in South Florida. But the greatest fear, obviously, is this is going to keep happening and we're going to see considerably higher sea level rise. I mean, upwards of, of several feet, potentially, by the end of the century, but even, you know, a foot uh, is possible in the next few decades. So if you've been to South Florida or, or many other places in the United States, New Orleans, Norfolk, Virginia, these are very low-lying coastal areas, and they are going to be you know, devastated by just another foot or two of sea level rise. All right, Dr. Rahm, um, let's pick this up in our second segment. There's so much more to talk about, about the findings of the report, also about the political reaction to all of this in Washington. So please join me again.